to my channel and this is the second video in corrosion types of electrochemical corrosion and my first video about the introduction to corrosion and theories of corrosion to explain the mechanisms of corrosion you can find that video in my channel i will give the link in the description so please watch that one for better understanding this session so types of corrosion there is a four types of so many types of corrosions is there we will going to discuss about the four types of corrosions so first one is bimetallic corrosion it is also called galvanic corrosion so name itself telling bimetallic corrosion when two different metals or more than two different metals are contacted each other and they are exposed to electrolyte what is the electrochemical corrosion in presence of moisture or electrolyte is called electrochemical corrosion so here bimetallic electrochemical corrosion two different metals and they are exposed to the electrolyte if you see here so here zinc and copper metals is there so zinc and copper metals is there two different metals is contacted each other here contacted each other and they are exposed to the electrolyte so now one of the metal involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called bimetallic corrosion or galvanic corrosion this is also called differential metal corrosion that means two different metals is there because of that here corrosion is happening that is also called differential metallic corrosion okay so now two metals is there they are connected each other and they are exposed to electrolyte one metal involved in corrosion good but which metal involved in corrosion the basic thing which metal having higher oxidation potential that metal loses electron that metal act as a anode and it is involved in corrosion and it's finally destroyed so we having higher oxidation here in zinc and copper zinc having higher oxidation potential so you can see here so zinc having higher oxidation potential than the copper zinc having higher oxidation potential having the copper so by mistakenly i wrote here increasing order but it is decreasing order so i'm sorry for that so decreasing order of oxidation potential if you observe magnesium having higher oxidation potential than the zinc zinc having higher than the iron like that so copper having lower oxidation potential than the zinc that means zinc having higher oxidation potential zinc involved in corrosion if you take any metal in the galvanic series or electrochemical series if you take any couples that means if you uh, uh, choose any two metals one metal having definitely higher oxidation potential than the other which metal having higher oxidation potential that finally involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called galvanic or bimetallic corrosion again here electrolyte may be acidic or neutral medium if it is acidic medium the corrosion takes place like this so acidic medium mean it produces h plus ions so at anode at anode zinc involved in corrosion it releases two electrons the two electrons absorbed by the acidic medium so it produces h2 gas and finally zinc is converting into zn plus 2 this is called oxidation zinc is no longer stay there it will converting slowly as zn plus 2 that means it is destroying itself by producing hydrogen gas so this is the bimetallic electrochemical corrosion in presence of acidic medium if the electrolyte is neutral medium so uh, it is a neutral medium means oxygen and water is there so the release electrons at the zinc is absorbed by the water in presence of oxygen it produces oh minus ions and finally zinc metal is converting into zinc hydroxide whatever it is electrolyte is acidic or neutral medium here zinc is involved in corrosion zinc is converting into zn plus 2 okay but final products are different somewhere if it is hcl is there it would produces a zinc chloride if the water is there it produces a zinc hydroxide whatever it is it is a zn plus 2 form it is converting from the zn 0 form it is called oxidation it act as anode it involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called bimetallic corrosion so take example here so this boat is made by uh, iron so case one is iron made boat with zinc bo zinc bolts somewhere some zinc bolts is there but boat is made by iron that is the first case and second one is boat is made by zinc metal 
and some of the bolts are connected with iron so which bolt safely reaches home so iron made zinc bolts or zinc made iron bolts which is which reaches home safely if you first case if you take iron and zinc iron and zinc iron having zinc having more oxidation potential than the iron zinc having so that means zinc involved in corrosion here zinc is the anode so zinc is the anode and iron is the cathode okay so two different metals is there so iron is the uh, cathode and zinc is the cathode in downside also same zinc is zinc and iron is there zinc act as a anode and iron act as a cathode but thing is in first case cathodic ratio is high more cathodic area is there than the anodic area zinc is very less bolts are very minimum size they have less anodic area in the second case more anodic area less cathodic area if less anodic area who involved in corrosion always anode involved in corrosion if you have less anodic area thus less anodic area immediately involved in corrosion the bolts will involved in corrosion they become weak it may be leads to failure of bolt it leads to allow the water inside the bolt maybe it sinks so the iron made board with zinc bolts will not reach home safely but zinc made board with iron bolts can survive for a longer time than the first one so like that we can conclude the thing so second one increasing order of oxidation potentials again i am writing increasing potential i'm sorry so it is a decreasing order of oxidation potentials so here magnesium having higher oxidation potential so this is the order you always remember this one so you can see here some of the uh, there is a two different metals one is a brass screw another is a mild steel screw mild steel screw having higher oxidation potential than the brass these are the alloys so these alloys will not enter in the electrochemical series but they are enter into the galvanic series so like that you can see different examples in galvanic cell also zinc and copper is there but zinc only dissolved as a zn plus 2 copper is not destroying here so only zinc is destroying here zinc involved in corrosion but copper is safe okay so like there so many examples is there so second one is differential aeration corrosion or concentration cell corrosion so i already made a video on concentration cells how they produce emf in the electrochemistry you can watch that one i also give the link about the concentration cells the concentration cell is nothing but electrochemical cell but here same electrodes but dipped into the different concentrations of the same electrolyte okay so same electrode same electrolyte but electrolyte concentrations are different when a same metal experiencing two different concentrations of something it involved it act as some of the part of the metal act as anode some of the part of the metal act as cathode and it involved in electrochemical corrosion this type of corrosion is called differential aeration corrosion okay so here name itself telling differential aeration aeration mean air concentration it is different about the metal so some of the metal some of the part of the metal experiencing more oxygen or air some of the metal experiencing low oxygen or air then some part of the metal act as anode some part of the metal act as cathode now which which part act is act as anode involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called differential aeration corrosion simply when a metal experiencing two different air concentrations then the metal involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called differential aeration corrosion okay. let's consider an example when a zinc metal dipped into water some of the part is dipped into water half of the part is in water and half of the part is part is out of the water the part which is dipped in the water having less experience of the air why because oxygen is not able to reach the uh, zinc metal which is into the water so here very less oxygenated area this area is very less oxygenated area and it act as a an anode and the some of the part of the metal which is not dipped into the water which experiencing more oxygen it is called anode 
the part which is poorly oxygenated act as anode and the part is highly oxygenated air is called act as cathode okay now anode involved in corrosion here moisture is there water is there so anodic spot and cathodic spot and electrolyte anode cathode and electrolyte both are all are there so it act as electrochemical cell so it is a concentration cell there is a only one metal but is experiencing two different concentrations of air it's it creates a concentration cell anodic part involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called differential aeration corrosion so we can see zinc involved in oxidation it releases electrons so which zinc the anodic part which is dipped in the water here the part leaves the electrons that electron reaches to the upside and here oxygen is there oxygen uh, accept that electrons and converting into OH minus ion. So finally, zinc hydroxide formed inner metal. So if you observe the uh, a spoon put into the system, or lemon pickle, in houses we generally use spoons, steel, steel, steel spoons. When you keep in the pickle, after some days, if you observe a black coating on the inside metal, inside spoon which is dipped into the pickle. This is because of differential aeration corrosion. The example for differential aeration corrosion is water line corrosion. When you store water in a tank, iron tank for a long time, if you observe, if you drain out the water, so the level of water where the water is being for a long time, just below the layer, you can see a rusting of the metal. This is called water line corrosion. This is also because of only differential aeration corrosion so if you see here this part which is dipped in the water this all part is act as anode this all part act as anode why because it is a poorly oxygenated area and upper part this uh, this part act as a cathode so inner part involved in corrosion and it forms a corrosive product here this is called water line corrosion if you take iron metal iron loses two electrons and produces fe plus two so it is in inter the water is there so if it is acid you can write the acidic reaction 2h plus ions plus two electron gives h2 so but we are taking as a neutral medium water that's why i'm writing the water reaction so of o2 plus h2o2 electron gives 2oh minus ions finally it gives a fe oh taken twice this is called water line corrosion and also fitting corrosion fitting corrosion is also example for the differential aeration corrosion when a, a dust particle placed on the metal for a long time for example if you take a metal here this is the metal so this metal a small dust particle placed on the metal so this is the dust particle under the dust particle there is no axle there is no experiencing of the air why because this dust particle covered this place so this is the less oxygenated area compared to other parts here more oxygen is there so that's why this part act as cathodic part and this poorly oxygenated part as cathode sorry anode so at the anode corrosion takes place but because of very 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 low anodic area this corrosion takes vertically so inside the metal it forms a holes cavities and bre break down pits this type of corrosion is called fitting corrosion uh, definition is termed as it is a non-uniform corrosion why because its corrosion is taking at a place this place and non-uniformly it's a randomly it's going and it is a localized that means at particular one point this corrosion is happening and accelerated is a very fast corrosion rate it having a very rate of corrosion is very high so non-uniform localized and accelerated corrosion is called fitting corrosion because of this corrosion, it forms fits, cavities, pinholes in the metal. This type of corrosion is called fitting corrosion. When the dust particles or water droplets or oil droplets placed on the metal for a long time, this type of corrosion is occurs. Another possibility also is there to protect metal if you paint the metal. We can paint the metal to protect from the corrosion. When you are using that metal, some paint layer is scratched it is destroyed some of the very very less metal metal area is exposed to air so now that small area act as anode that area involved in corrosion that also is called fitting corrosion 
so these are the example for erosion and final one is stress corrosion so stress corrosion mean when we are want to make a metal objects for example metal chair if you want to make a chair with iron metal you need to bend you need to weld you need to uh, ham that one that mean you you need to work a lot of work mechanical work on the metal like bending hammering thermal treatment pressing welding drawing rolling these are mechanical work when you are working on that you are giving energy some parts not totally metal where you want to bend you are giving more energy at that part where you want to make it sharp you want to give more energy to that part you are giving energy that energy stored at that place so that highly energetic part act as anode and remaining part act as cathode that highly energetic part anode involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called stress corrosion for example if you see here <coughs> sorry if you see here this is the metal make it as a sharp one to make it as sharp one you need to work here you are giving more uh, work mechanical work here that's why it is storing more energy compared to this part compared to this part that's why this part act as anode I like that also you are changing the shape of the metal by applying mechanical force here this part also act as anode compared to this part remaining all part as cathode now anode involved in corrosion when you bend a metal you are applying more energy at this place this part act as an anode remaining part act as a cathode this part the bended part act as anode involved in corrosion this type of corrosion is called stress corrosion finally we discuss the different type of electrochemical corrosion bimetallic corrosion differential aeration corrosion and stress corrosion by in bimetallic corrosion electrolyte is same but different two metals in differential aeration corrosion electro electrode is same but electrolytes are different concentration of electrolyte is different that's why differential aeration corrosion and third one is metal is same okay electrolyte is same in the metal in the metal the energy distribution is different that is called stress corrosion you can learn like this so this is the topic for today please subscribe my channel and share comment if you like please press the like button of my videos thanking for watching